Hey everyone, I'm Katie from Addicted to DIY and today I'm showing you how to build a side table with storage. I used Naughty Alder for this project which I milled down on my table saw starting with the legs. I milled them down to 2x2 two two size which is 1.5 by 1.5 inches in nominal thickness. Once the legs were milled, I took them over to my miter saw and cut them down to length. As the name suggests, there are going to be some knots in this wood. I like to fill them with epoxy, which gives them a little bit of a cleaner look and also adds a bit of extra strength. I used masking tape to tape off the edges of the knots where I'd be filling with epoxy to prevent any of it from spilling over. I mixed up about two ounces total of tabletop epoxy and then used a dark gray pigment powder for coloring. You can use any coloring that you like or you could just leave it clear. Once my epoxy was mixed up, I drizzled it over the knots in the legs. I took my time with this step, letting the epoxy seep down into all of the knots and then refilling as necessary. I also used my heat gun to remove any air bubbles that occur when you're mixing the epoxy. I then set it aside to dry. While the epoxy was curing on the legs, I moved over to milling down the wood that makes up the side panels and the center shelf of the side table. I used my adaptive cutting system and set the width so that I could batch cut all of the pieces. Once I had ripped down all of the boards to width, I went over to my thickness planer and planed them down to 3 quarters of an inch thickness. Once I had the wood planed to thickness, I drilled 3 quarter inch pocket holes into each of the pieces and then glued and clamped them together. I used 1 and a quarter inch pocket holes to attach everything securely. I followed all of these same steps when I was assembling the center shelf of the side table. Once all of the panels were assembled, I went back over to my adaptive cutting system and squared up the ends. With that step finished, I moved on to assembling the drawer front and also the back panel of the side table. I drilled 3 quarter inch pocket holes into each of the pieces and then assembled them with wood glue, clamps, and 1 and a quarter inch pocket screws. The side panels also had a few knots in them that needed to be filled with epoxy, so I mixed up a new batch and got started filling them. My advice on this step is to work smarter and not harder. Do it all at the same time as you're filling the knots in your legs, so that way you save time and you also save on epoxy. The next step was to build the tabletop. I used 6 quarter knotty alder, which is about an inch and a half thick, and I cut it down to length on my miter saw. Once I had all of my pieces cut down to length, I ripped them down to five and a half inches wide on my table saw. Once I finished ripping the pieces to width, I went back over to my workbench to begin gluing up the tabletop. I used a glue roller for this, which I love using because it evenly distributes the glue everywhere and it saves a lot of time. One trick I've learned when clamping the piece together that you're gluing up is to not over tighten the clamps. This could cause your workpiece to bow and nobody likes that. So just tighten it until you see a little bit of glue squeeze out and then leave it alone. I left the glue to cure overnight and then the next day released the clamps and took it over to my adaptive cutting system. I purposely cut the boards for this tabletop a little long knowing that they wouldn't be perfectly flush on the ends when gluing it up. I squared up one end, then turned it around and cut it down to its finished size. Next up was sanding. You can use an orbital sander or a belt sander starting with 80 grit sandpaper to smooth out your tabletop before working your way up to finer grits. If you happen to have a drum sander, you can also use it and save yourself a little time, which is exactly what I did. 
With the epoxy cured on the side panels and legs, and everything sanded smooth, it was time to start assembly of the base. I drilled one and a half inch pocket holes into the top and bottom pieces that make up part of the frame for the sides, and then glued and clamped them to the top and bottom edges of the side panels. The panels will be flush with the inside edge of the frames. Next up, I attached the legs. I glued up the edges of the panels and then clamped the legs in place, attaching them with two and a half inch pocket screws. To attach the front and back stretchers to the bottom portion of the base, I flipped the base so it was laying down on the workbench, set the stretcher in place, then clamped it. I did the same for the other stretcher, flipped the base upside down, and attached them using one and a quarter inch pocket screws. The back panel was set in place with wood glue and clamps, then I attached it in place with one and a quarter inch pocket screws. I also clamped and attached the center shelf in place. To build the drawer, I used scrap 3 quarter inch plywood that I had left over from other projects. You can definitely use half inch plywood to build the drawer, but I figured I'd just use what I had on hand rather than going back to Home Depot. If you do use half inch plywood, make sure to account for the difference in thickness when cutting the drawer box pieces down to size. I drilled 3 quarter inch pocket holes into the front and back pieces of the drawer box, then went over to my router table. This step is totally optional, but I really like smoothing off the edges of the drawers with a roundover bit. Alternately, you can just soften up all of the edges with sandpaper if you don't have or want to use a router. After giving the pieces a final sanding, I glued and clamped the drawer box together. I attached the pieces with one and a quarter inch pocket screws. I took a final measurement of the drawer box dimensions and then went over to my table saw to cut the quarter inch plywood for the bottom. I attached it with wood glue and 3 quarter inch narrow crown staples, but you can also use a brad nailer for this. To attach the tabletop to the base, I used desktop fasteners. I'll have those linked in my website tutorial. I marked the locations for them, then traced the outside edge of them on the top of the frame. I used a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit and drilled down about an eighth inch until the fastener was flush with the top of the frame. I did go a little deeper than intended on a couple of the holes, but it really didn't make a difference when attaching the top. I attached the fasteners to the base with one and a quarter inch wood screws. This may have been a bit of overkill, but again, I didn't want to go back out to the store and decided to use the smallest screws I had on hand. I attached three on each side of the base. I bought 18 inch side mount drawer slides for the drawer and attached them using my drawer slide jig. Originally, I had planned to center them perfectly inside the base, but the drawer slide jig only went down so far. Luckily, it was close enough to center that it really didn't matter. I drilled pilot holes for all of the screws prior to attaching the drawer slides. Drawer slides can be my nemesis, and I have fought many battles to get them installed. The pilot holes make it far easier for me to drive the screws in, even though those back screws still like to be difficult. All 
On the drawer box, I centered the other half of the drawer slides and again drilled pilot holes and then attached them with the included screws. The finished drawer slid nicely into place and I was ready to continue on. I set the tabletop onto the base and then centered it so that the overhang was equal on all four sides. I clamped it down and then attached it via the desktop fasteners and one and a quarter inch wood screws. To attach the drawer front, I used a trick I've picked up along the way. I set my hardware jig up to match the hole spacing for the handle I purchased and then centered it on the drawer front. I pre-drilled the holes using the jig and then set the drawer front in place using playing cards to set my gap all the way around. I drove one and a quarter inch screws through the holes and into the drawer box, which temporarily secures it in place. This allows me to pull out the drawer and fully attach it from the inside with screws. Once the drawer front is attached, I removed the screws from the front, finished drilling my holes through the drawer box, and attached my hardware. So a couple of things that I feel like are worth mentioning. For starters, I ended up filling all of the pocket holes in the open shelf space in the side table. It started to really bother me that I could see all of the pocket holes and I regretted not filling them to begin with but I did use my Craig plug cutter and I grabbed some scrap gnaw the alder and I was able to make my own custom plugs for all of those pocket holes and I really love the way that it looks now. I didn't film that step, regrettably, um, so I don't have footage to show you of that, but it is actually very easy to do. Another thing is that you'll notice that I haven't finished the side table yet. I'm gonna be building a matching coffee table and I really haven't decided yet how I'm gonna finish both of those, whether uh, what color I'm gonna use or what type of finish in general. So I'm holding off on that until I finish building the coffee table, which I will also be showing a video for. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching this video today. For more tutorials just like this one, be sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've also queued up a few other videos that I think you might enjoy.